Hello everyone and welcome back to Shanka Show, the place we can always learn something new about life in the Soviet Union. If you're new to my channel, my name is Sergei Sputnikov and back in 1971 I was born in the USSR. All your videos are deception and slander. All your videos are bullshit. Try to learn economy before telling something and read Marx. Recently in my video about Soviet slackers we learned about pragulshiki. Pragulshiki, people who were skipped work or showed up at work and were skipping work by taking extended smoke breaks. Pragulshiki. And a while back I made a video about Soviet Nisuni, the workers that were stealing stuff from the places of work. And of course during the Soviet days we didn't consider taking stuff from work stealing. Stealing if you steal from your neighbor. But if you just take stuff from your work, you don't steal, you just carry it. That's why it was called Nisuni, the ones that carry it. And I also had a video about Balnichny list and about workers that skipped work using bogus medical excuses and they would get Balnichny list, so that's like a medical document claiming they have some kind of disease, like they had problems with their eyes because they just couldn't see themselves coming to work. And that's a video about that too. And in today's video we're going to talk about Brakadeli. Brakadeli. So that's the people that were manufacturing defective parts, defective items like shoes, clothing and so on. Brakadeli. So Brakadeli produced brak. Brak it's defective items, defective parts. And the origin of the word is interesting. It came apparently from the German language, uh, from the word brak. B-R-A-C-K, which means bad goods. And of course in English there's a word break. So there's something broken. And in German it's brechen. I think it's like that. So that's the word brak that means defective parts. Fun fact, Russian language has another word brak, which means totally different thing. It means marriage. And apparently that word came from the Russian language, from the verb brat, to take. So if you take someone as a wife, you kind of have brak. So we have two words that mean completely different things. Brak as the defective part and brak, marriage. And of course this interesting situation with brak and brak has a lot of uh, jokes played on that similarity. For example, we say brakam So the good things won't be called brak and that's in relations to marriage. I want to apologize. I failed to locate any information about how bad situation was with producing defective parts with brak in the Soviet Union. I mean like percentage wise was that 10% or 20% of items produced were not a good quality and they were refused. But apparently it was a really bad problem generally in the Soviet industries because we had a lot of posters and a lot of caricatures addressing the problem with bra. And that's what I'm planning to do today is show you some of those posters and caricatures and we're gonna translate them and discuss them. Brak, vrag, daloy, brak. Defective parts are enemies. No more defective parts. So here it's the industrial settings, right? And it looks like guy just doesn't care. He's not looking at the parts, so he's just manufacturing defective parts because he is slacking. He's a bad worker. Не радуйся, Вова. Брак не обнова. Don't be happy, Vova, that's the boy's name. Defective shoes is not a new item for you. And about a poor boy we see this graph which is called Plan Pavalu. So that's a total plan of how many shoes you need to manufacture. So that kind of hints you that in order to fulfill the plan, like factory was required to produce, let's say, 500,000 pairs of shoes, at some point they will just manufacture whatever they can to hit the plan targets and they're even going to ship out shoes that brak poor quality. Next one is just the basic kind of slogan that was used at the factories. Brakadil podvodit tovarishay collective. So brakadil person who makes defective goods, he sets up his co-workers and the whole collective. The whole team. Okay, so in this caricature we have the whole poem about brakadil. Он отточил полтоны стали. Он сделал множество деталей. И нужно каждую деталь переправлять обратно в сталь. In translation, so that's an actual poem, but of course I can't rhyme it in English. So he went through the half of ton of steel and made a bunch of parts. And now every part 
needs to be melted back into the steel. So just useless waste of time and making brak. Okay, here we have another poem about brakadeli. Brak na lico, a причин ni šest. Brat vindu na sebe nikomu ni hochetsa, a vidu kazde причini jest. Familia, imia, ochestva. So everyone can see the defect and the reasons are countless for that poor quality product, but no one wants to take responsibility but every reason for the poor quality has its last name and first name. And it's just a quick side note. In the Soviet, like a caricature and poster arts, Brak was always shown, or many times was shown as a shoe that fell apart. And it also almost looked like a pike face, you know, with the nails sticking out like teeth. So it's a classic image. If you want to show Brak, you will show that shoe that has a sole fell off and a nail sticking out, just like in this picture. So inside of that Brakovany boot, so defective shoe, that's a director of the factory or whoever is in charge there writing the long list of excuses why they produce so much defective shoes. And on the bottom you see three Brakadeli, so that's the people who make poor quality. And that's interesting, so they show a person whose head looks like a tree trunk, and it's the dub. <laughs> it's the oak tree, which usually in Russian language, if they call you dub, that means that you are not a bright person. So that's first brakadiel, the person that designs shoe poorly. He's just stupid. He's dub. Second person, the lady that has a um, saroka. I'm not sure what the word saroka in English. That's this loud bird. It looks like a crow, but has a long tail. So she has a nest with Saroka. So she's spending her time talking to co-workers and not paying attention to what she's doing. And the third Brakadiel, you probably guessed yourself, it's a guy who's drinking too much or maybe he drunk at work or he had always having a hangover. So that makes him produce poor quality shoes. So as you see along the way, posters tell us what they think they were the reason for the poor quality items. So we have drinking problems. We have people who don't care. We have people who doesn't pay attention and we have directors of the factories that trying to achieve the targets, the plan. And that's why they crank in the high volume crappy shoes. They crank in Brak. All right, moving along. The next poster is pretty simple. And that's what they use in this play that Brak and Brak. So it's all it says Brak. And you see this drunk guy in the workers coveralls and his bride, which may not defective parts. So this is marriage. Brak, and it's also Brak, as a poor quality items. And it's quite obviously why a guy that is manufacturing Brak, because he's dr drunk. He has a vodka bottle in his pocket and a glass of his vodka in his hand. Another poster with a similar idea. Iz rabochi gushi vyganim pyushich. From the workers' environment, let's kick everyone who's drinking excessively. So once again, you have a drunk guy who's uh, hugging a bottle of vodka with one hand and a defective part, brak, with another hand. I'm saying brak, it's supposed to be brak. So I, I like this poster a lot, it's done really well. Next poster, you see a big crate with brak, so that's defective parts. So a worker is a part of being defective, and of course you could tell he's drinking too much, he has a bottle in his hand, and the poster says, no periplavku, for remelting. So you need to remelt the parts, melt the parts, and you need to melt the worker. Okay, so next poster we got again beautiful rhymes. Rabotnik etat posle pjanki, butilku tochit iz balvanki, ni shum at nivo, ni drag, a tolka stoprocentnei brak. This worker is after drinking party, so he has having hangover, and he's making a bottle from the metal part. He doesn't make noise, he doesn't fight with anyone, but he only produces 100% of defective parts. 100% nebrak. All right, another poster probably don't need even translation. Once again, we have a little rhyme going on here. Kogda rabotnik vachmilu, vlady truda ravne nulu. When the worker is having hangover, the result of his labors equals zero. Finally, we have kind of like a positive poster. It says, rabotajte kak my. Work like us. And this little poster behind the guy says, 
plan is 107%, so they outperformed. Instead of 100%, they did 107% of something. And Brock, defective parts, 0%. Excellent result. Okay, this poster once again has a little poem. Иные рассуждают так. Коль нужен план, пройдет и брак. Все потому, что в АТК у бракоделов есть рука. And atop it says, я везучий, а ты ка проскочил. And it can be translated as, some people figure out that if you need to complete the plan, you can even send a defective product out, and only because that OTK will let you do it. And OTK, it's, everyone knew that, that every factory in the Soviet Union has a, like, quality control. It's отдел технического контроля, so it's department of the technical control or quality control. So quite often, director of the factory will call OTK and tell them, like, hey, we need to send out, you know, 500 pairs of shoes today, so don't inspect them because we'll be just cranking them regardless of the quality so we can hit our quota. So OTK, отдел технического контроля. Another poster, and it says, Ни минуты простоя, ни копейку брака. Not a minute of wasted time and not a kopeck of wasted defective parts. And this caricature is called Не умеет на глазок работать. And I got a little poem. Халтурщиков узнаешь сразу. Все на глазок. Все кое-как. Глядели б лучше в оба глаза. На то, как и живают брак. So here you see two older experienced worker. They're making fun of the younger worker because he doesn't know how to eyeball the parts. He measures everything carefully. And a poem says that people who manufacture poor quality goods, in this case they use the word halturshik, we'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, so they do everything eyeballing, but they better use both of their uh, balls, both of their eyes, to watch how you take care of and get rid of the poor quality stuff, how you can rid of brak. Halturshik. Halturshik. So that's another interesting Soviet word. It's actually had two different meanings. In this case, it's similar to brakadiel, the person who makes haltura, which is like crappy quality product. But a lot of times, if you do something on the side, like you use the tools from the factory or something like that, you also halturshik. You're making haltura, which is you do some additional work to put money in your pocket. So it's interesting. But in this case, it's brakadiel. And this poster actually reminded me that long time ago I heard that if you purchase a car, if you can't find out on what day of the week it was manufactured, you better don't buy a car made on Mondays because people have a hangover from partying on the weekend. So this is a similar thing. A guy is pushing a cart loaded with brak with defective parts and it says it's so heavy on Mondays because on Monday... Even Soviet workers had a hangover. And I also stumbled upon this cool socialist realism art. So this painting is called Brakadiel. It was done in 1953 and it shows you situation at work when a guy made a defective part, made a brak, and now he's being coached by his older supervisor. Brakadiel. All right, my friend. So what we got here is... Failure to produce a quality items. Some men just can't make anything but brak. <laughs> Sorry about that. I think it sounded pretty crappy, but you might got the reference. So anyways, it's obviously making defective parts, brakadielstva. Brak was a big problem in the Soviet industries. It especially was bad, bad with the, we call it lohka industry, a light industry. So manufacturing clothing, shoes, and other items for population, but it also was a big problem on the heavy industries, which you see in the posters. There's a lot of posters, a lot of caricatures poking fun at Bracadieli and Brak. Of course, not everything was a poor quality. For example, we had a refrigerator called Dnieper 2, a small refrigerator, 150 rubles. My parents bought it after I was born in 1971, and it worked, and still works, so that's like 50 years. Not a single repair needed to be done. It's just chugging along. No issues whatsoever. Then my parents had this cassette player of Vietnam, and it was a piece of crap. They paid a lot of money for it, and it was constantly breaking down. Constantly we had issues with it. 
So, and they, I think, paid as much money as for a refrigerator. And before I finish, I would like to thank Alicia from Finland for doing an amazing job to put in the emotions and sound behind Mushanka Show hate comments. Thank you, Alicia. You sound great. Well, my friends, it's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe learn something new. As always, don't forget to like this video, post your comments, and we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. Sergey uh, wrote a book based on diaries he made when he was first in the United States. And I, as I understand, this is just volume one, right? That's correct. He's going to have more, multiple volumes coming out. Well, I said, well, since uh, Sergey is kind enough to come up and speak with us, I bought the book. I said, I might as well read this. I read this in one sitting, two hours, two and a half hours. I just couldn't put it down. It was so fascinating because uh, your writing is very compelling for one, and his story is very interesting for two. It's really interesting. You know, we've lived here our whole lives. We don't have that perspective. It's just so interesting to hear someone else's perspective about what we take for granted. So I hope you really tune in and, and listen to what he has to say. It's a very interesting, very informed perspective. Sergey is not a historian. He's an electrical engineer by trade, but I find that he has a depth of understanding on history, economics, culture. So just a, just a very observant fellow and a, a great storyteller. So uh, let's.